We have been looking fairly intentionally at um, some of the doctrines of the faith. Uh, and I noted last week when I went home that I was exhausted. I think I've been doing a lot of mind crunching around theologians and theologies that uh, I don't spend a lot of time day in and day out doing. So I thought, you know, this week we're looking at empowerment. We're going to look at a, kind of a, a doctrine that is about the Holy Spirit, this wild and wonderful and winsome Holy Spirit. And I thought another sermon that kind of crunched through history and doctrine was exactly the opposite thing the Holy Spirit would call us to do. So I decided to put on my poet's hat and try my hand at something a little more lyrical, a little more flowing, and allow the Holy Spirit to work through me. So, I offer to you an ode, that's O-D-E, ode to a different kind of power. There is power, and there is power. And there is power. Our world is acquainted with all kinds of power, is it not? Power to build and power to destroy. Power to create and power to kill. And power to simply maintain what is. Power to and for far too many of the Earth's residents, time past, time present, and time to come, the thirst for power has become an abuse of power. And the search for power has been for ill will and personal gain. Such power demands, such power requires, such power justifies the amassing of more power by those who seek to restore balance and justice and hope and right. Many think of power as an object, a treasure, or a substance, something that can be given or taken, something that can be discovered and lost. Something that can be passed down and something that can be received. Like a precious jewel bequeathed through family legacy. A building fashioned with brick and stone and mortar, wood and pipes. Or a vein of minerals coursing deep within the earth whose rights are and soul and barter. There are these kinds of power, I suppose, but that is not the kind of power of which I sing praises this day. I tell you not of the powers of kings and queens, princes and princesses, not the kind of power of prime ministers and presidents, CEOs and titans of industry, not the kind of power of university Certainly not the kind of power of warlords, dictators, Caesars, pharaohs, family tribes, and lands. I intone the virtues of a power that does not trickle down, but one that is already deep within each one of the earth's creatures. A power present from dawn's first dewfall. A power that is as ubiquitous as our very breath. I sing of the power of God. I sing of the power of God. The power of God infuses every being, for it is present far before the flower blooms, the diamond forms, the bridges built in the valley car. A power that is present before the steel is forged or the baby born. The power of God 
stronger than the earth quaking, the winds blowing, the seas crashing, the mill grinding, the atoms splitting. For it is the power that precedes all of these. It is a power that is all of these. It is God's power. The power of God shows its strength in ways too difficult for humans to fathom, too wonderful for us to discern. For the greatest, the greatest power of God is shown in the simplest of circumstances. On the forest floor, a mighty tree is broken down cell by cell by moss and bacteria and the tiniest ant. A snake whose skin slowly molts away shows the power of God in a new skin. On a mighty mountain, a river roaring somewhere on the land begins by dripping ice melt. In the city streets, the ebb, the flow of vehicles and pedestrians, throngs and throngs show the mighty power of God in the human heart. An ancient grievance, now forgiven. This is the power of God. It is this power. It is this power that precedes all others. It is this power, this power that is intrinsic to all things. It is this power that is as evident in things gentle as well as things mighty. That is the power of which Jesus spoke. That is the power in which Jesus lived and relied. That is the power that Jesus promised would be our comforter, our God, our advocate, our companion. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is our power also. If we but, but choose if we but recognize it, if we but acknowledge it, if we but use it, but to recognize, but to acknowledge, but to use the power of the Holy Spirit, we must give up many, many things. We must let go of the need to use this power for our own whim and will. We must let of power given to us by history and culture. We must let go of the images. We must let go of the myth that this power can be handed off like a, a football or bought like a license or taken like a number at a lunch counter. We must let go of the notion that this kind of power is a fortune to be made, a nation to be founded, a fame to be fashioned, a war to be fought, or even a skill to be learned. To recognize, to acknowledge, and to use the power of the Holy Spirit, we must give up many things. We must, must let go of our fears that we are not worthy. We must let go of our doubts that we are not wise enough. We must let go of our anger at how other forms of power have been used against us. We must, most of all, let go of our hunger, our thirst, our craving for power. And most importantly, we must let go of the belief that we do not yet have this power. It was given to us long ago, before our birth. It is the very essence of who we are as children of God. You, I, we have the power of God. This power is unlike anything else we know. It will be 
grounded within us, but not in our beliefs, not in our commitments, not in our loyalties, not in our abilities. It will be grounded in one thing, and one thing only. Say it with me. It will be grounded in love. It will be grounded in nothing but love. Did you hear that? The power of God, known to us as the Holy Spirit, will be grounded in and made manifest by our love. Every act of love, no matter how small, no matter how large, no matter how And like so much that is God, this love will be both fully and completely comprehensible, comprehensible, and it will be fully and completely incomprehensible. It will be both second nature to us, and it will be mystery beyond all knowing. Thus, this love will remind us of God, for God is made known to us in love. God has been made known to us in love throughout our history. In laws inscribed on a tablet. In a lily blooming in the field. In a neighbor in need next door. And God will be beyond like manna that comes to us in the wilderness. Like a lament when we're sent into exile. Like the promise to a young baby. This love and power of God will be beyond our understanding. Like a crucifixion, a Savior, I know. But given a wee bit of faith, some say faith the size of a mustard seed, we will come to trust in this kind of power and we will let go of trust in all the other kinds of power. We will come to trust this God power which seems as foreign to us and our human nature is a stranger knocking on our doorstep, and yet as familiar to us as a warm and worn family quilt. And as we begin to trust more and more in this kind of power, we will be filled to overflowing with the love of God. Help us, O oh God, to let go of the things that hold us back from receiving your kind of power. And until that day comes, until that day comes, when we fully grasp and let go of the power that is yours, O oh God, let us sing the ancient hymn that the poet serenaded to a people very much like us long, long ago. I pray that according to the riches of God's glory, that God will grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through God's Holy Spirit, and that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses our human understanding so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. 
Now, to the one, to the one who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we could ever imagine or ask, to that one be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen.